Well, buenos dias and gloria a Dios. Adios, gloria a Dios. So, good morning, glory to God. It's good to be here, isn't it? I like coming here on Sunday. I like just being with church family on Sunday. Um, as most of you might know, um, me and Chad were away last weekend. And I'm glad to be back with my family and the church family. But we went up, um, you'll see the picture here, but we went up, me and brother Chad went up to Massachusetts to visit a church. Um, we're doing a, we're going to be, we're planning a short-term submission trip to. There's some needs there um, at the church and there's some needs in the community there. But it was, it was a really good time. I really enjoyed it. I think we were both blessed uh, to have gone on that trip. The picture you see here, obviously, uh, the two bald head guys are me and Chad. Um, up in the middle, up above us, that's Pastor Gina. On the right-hand side, that's her husband. Uh, they call him Pastor Mimo. I can't even pronounce his, his actual name. That's why they call him Pastor Mimo. And on the left, that's uh, Sister Mary. Uh, she is a deacon at the church, and we were just so blessed to meet with her, talk with them, and everything. And uh, I don't know, uh, I was talking with Chad one day, and he just felt a need, a God calling us to go up there, so we kind of <laughs> planned a little bit and packed our bags and, and went up, and I let Gina know, and I told her, I wasn't sure, we were, neither me or Chad were sure what was going to happen, so I, I, I called our trip a faith trip, and that's really what it was, because we went up there, and with some things on our mind, but just kind of letting God do what he wanted. Uh, Chad said about fasting, I'm like, okay, I uh, kind of prepared to fast for a couple days, and just kind of stay at the church. He said about just kind of staying at the church, maybe the neighborhood praying and everything. And God's good. We didn't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and we laugh about that, but it's good to let what we have planned isn't always what God has planned, right? So we get up there and we talk with Pastor Gina and her husband, and the first thing planning on fasting, uh, and the first thing is, she tells her husband, take us out for lunch. So we went out for lunch. Um, we didn't starve or anything, and we're planning on staying at the church. We're like, okay, and I told Pastor Gina, we'll just stay at the church, it's okay. Um, I had a sleeping bag, everything ready. Um, she said they had air mattresses. I was like, okay, we're sleeping on the floor or an air mattress, it don't matter. We're, we're going to say, that. well, that didn't happen either. Uh, the first night we were there, she's like, you're not staying here. Um, her cousin owns a hotel, and we got to stay in a hotel. So, and, but again, not something we planned, but we kind of just followed what God had in store. And... It's one of those moments we really got to see God. He provided our food. He provided a place to sleep comfortably. Um, is that always the case? Probably not, but whatever you need, God's going to provide for you. Amen. So go ahead and go to the second slide here. So this was an interesting day. This was on Saturday. So this, we had a sectional meeting just this past Thursday. This was at their sectional meeting. So they had their meeting downstairs, and then upstairs they had a service. And they're like, okay, they had a service. There's a bunch of there was 14 churches there. The best part about this is the service was all handled by the kids. Wow. Worship through that and everything. And the kicker, there was a kid. A, I'm guessing around 12 years old. I don't know. I didn't confirm with, with Gina, 12 years old, but he preached the word that day. So that was just such a blessing to see the next generation that they're raising up 
willing to step out. I mean, 12 years old, or around there anyway, I know I wasn't going to preach. I mean, how many in here would <coughs> preach a sermon at, at that age? Um, but it's good. He got the, from what he preached, he really got to see God work in his family's lives, and he just wanted to share that with people. So Sunday came around, that was Saturday, and Sunday came around, and we're like, okay, we have, we're going to stay for service, and then we'll leave, and we're going to, okay, we're going to hear the word from Pastor Gina. Well, we heard the word from Pastor Gina, but that's not exactly how that happened. The night before, she, um, the day, Saturday, she asked about Chad giving a word that day, it's like, okay. That's okay. We can work that out. Chad's, Chad's good at that. <laughs> he won't say it, but he's good at that. So, okay, we're planning that. And she's like, that night, she's like, no, I'm going to have you both tag team preach. I was like, okay. If you don't know what that is, you take two preachers and they, they preach. They, they hand off. So not only did Chad preach, I preached. And not only did we tag team preach, we preached with an interpreter. Totally different experience for both of us. I don't think when God says be ready in season and out of season, he means it. (laughs) So again, you know, but it was a great service. I didn't understand half the words that they were saying. I figured I don't need to know what they're saying. I need to know who they're glorifying. And that's all that mattered. So it was just really good service. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. So after service, we're like, okay, service is done. We're going to go head home, get home at a decent time. Well, again, God had other plans. And if you ever meet Pastor Gina, she is one of the ones that she just tells you. She doesn't ask. She just kind of tells. <laughs> so you kind of just go along with it. Um, just a little background on her. But Pastor Gina, just, she grew up, her dad's a pastor, she's been a missionary for a number of years, she served in, uh, she does missions stuff in 13 different countries, uh, she's got to minister in all but three of the states, United States, um, she's working on trying to complete the U.S., <laughs> but in amongst that, Uh, Right now, she's battling uh, cancer, but here's the great thing. She might be battling cancer, but I can't remember if she said it's 15 plus years ago, the doctor said she had one year to live, and she's still going. And Sunday service, she actually sang on Sunday service, and I didn't know this until we were up there. She only has one lung. Wow. So, and she was singing, like, at the top of her lung, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> but it was good to see. But after service, me and Chad were like, okay, after service, we'll say goodbye, we'll head out. God didn't have that plan in mind. Um, they were getting, they were planning lunch preparations and stuff to go out to lunch, and She's like, oh, no, you're coming with us. Okay. (laughs) So we got the, and this is actually a Dominican restaurant that we're at. Uh, You can see me and Chad tucked there in the back on the right-hand side. I think they put us in the corner on purpose so we couldn't (laughs) couldn't leave. But on the left-hand side in the back is her husband, uh, Pastor Gina, obviously, in the front on the left-hand side. Uh, The people on the right, I'm not sure. I didn't catch their names. But also on the right is um, a guy named Rene and his wife and kids that we got to meet also. And it was just them talking, mostly to Chad. I'm pretty quiet in some instances, but just talking and having fun and breaking bread with each other, you know? Just that, and we didn't feel like outsiders. 
So when we got there, they said, welcome home. Amen. So it's really nice to know that not only do you have a church family here, wherever you go, you have family. Amen. And sometimes we forget that, I think. That, yeah, we have family that we're related to, but if you belong to a church, you have a church family, and it's bigger than just this building, yeah. bigger than just this town. So, and even though they might speak a different language, they all know Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know some people said about it and have mentioned it to others, but you kind of know other Christians. Like if they're really following the Lord, you, you kind of just know. Amen. So that was, re- the trip was really good um, in that we got to leave at around 4 o'clock. We got back at 11 on Sunday night. But no real issues on the road. Uh, not really too heavy a traffic. Not really any weather. Just the whole trip was just a blessing through all of it. And the good thing is, I like watching God, and Gene can probably attest to this because it happened uh, Thursday too. It kind of the trip kind of made me just kind of open my eyes and watch what God was doing. You know, pay attention. Sometimes we can have our eyes closed, and as as we may say, even though we don't see it. You know, he's still working. But if we open our eyes and look, we can see where he's working. And this trip is, being able to share this trip is a perfect introduction to uh, the message I wanted to have today. And you thought that was the message, right? (laughs) So uh, up in Massachusetts, Pastor Gina is, is busy uh, that, like I said, there's needs at the church, and in the community, there's, there's sort, all sorts of needs. Um, she's one to deal with homeless, gang leaders, drug dealers, um, prostitutes, just in her area. Uh, when they first got there, there's a, a store that's a front for some illegal activity, and somebody got stabbed and died when they first got there. But since she's been there, She's been out in the community talking about Jesus. And when they start to have service, it gets cleared out. So God's working in that. And with that, as I said, she goes out in the community, she tells people about the God, people about Jesus. And we're all called to proclaim the gospel. To who? All creation. You find that in Mark 16, 15. And yet sometimes, I know with me, I'm shy. I don't, you know, we have trouble crossing the street, talking with coworkers, talking with our bosses. Wherever we're at, sometimes we have trouble just letting people know, hey, I'm a Christian, I follow Christ. This is what I believe. This is where my faith is found in that. This is what my hope is. And it's okay to be shy, but if God says proclaim the gospel to all creation, proclaim it. You don't have to worry about it. And we find that um, I don't have scripture on a screen, but you have these Bibles So we're going to be in Romans 10 this morning. And I'm going to start at verse 12. If you can't find Romans, it's right after Acts. So verse 12 starts out. For there is no distinction between Jew and... I'm reading from the New King James, by the way. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. 
For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm just going to stop there for a second. So there's no distinction between any of us. All who call on his name, he'll save. And then we continue on. Verse 14. We have some things going on here. Paul then writes, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who, have, who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So Paul writes, all who call upon him shall be saved. But then he asks some questions. Verse 14, how can they call on him who have they, they have not believed? So how does one believe? The next question kind of answers that, but is also a, another question, is how shall they believe in him who have, they have not heard? So to believe is to hear, to hear is to believe. And then it goes on, how can they believe they have not heard, how can they hear if somebody doesn't preach? So he's saying if somebody doesn't go out and preach the gospel, how can anybody hear, then how can they believe and call on his name to be saved? And I read through some commentaries, but they use the word, some use the word preacher, some use the word preach, um, depending on your translation, might use a different word. Um, but some people might think, well, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a pastor, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, well, let me ease you here. The Greek word they use here for preach is keruso which also means to herald, herald or to proclaim. So if you go back to Mark 16, 15, Jesus tells us to go proclaim the gospel to all creation. Some will actually use to preach the gospel to all creation. So you see, the word preach is also proclaim. And actually, proclaim would probably be, to me, a better word to use here. Just because it doesn't, it doesn't take our minds to limit ourselves. So he says, proclaim the gospel to all creation. And Paul writes, how can they hear if somebody doesn't proclaim to them? If, they don't pro if we don't proclaim to people Jesus, they can't believe. Amen. Or they can't hear. If they don't hear, they're not going to believe. And if they don't believe, how can they be saved? And we go on to verse 15. It continues, how can they preach or how can they proclaim unless they are sent? Which I find that interesting. Because you might say, well, I wasn't sent to proclaim anything. Mark 16, 15 says, yes, Jesus sent us to proclaim the gospel. And even the word sent here, in the Greek, it's apostello, kind of apostle, sent one, but it means to send, to send away. Uh, one of the uses to send, one of the uses of that word is to send with a message or send with a commission. So some of you that might sound familiar, some might not, but in Matthew 28, we had the Great Commission. Go, make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Kind of along with Mark's uh, ending where he says, go proclaim the gospel to all creation. So for me, Jesus sent us. 
He sent his disciples, but he also sent us into the world to proclaim Jesus to all creation. He doesn't say just the people, which I found interesting. Um, but those are the main ones we should be proclaiming to, right? The people we have that we work with alongside. You know, they might be having a tough day and you can just show them the love of Jesus. Um, the neighbor across the street, go knock on the door, say hello. If you see somebody alongside the, walking alongside the road, maybe they need a ride, maybe they don't. We don't stop to ask. Maybe somebody's broken alongside down the road, uh, they have their cars broken down. What's it hurt to stop to ask if they need help? I'm talking to myself here, so don't, don't, I don't want anybody to feel bad. Um, I'm guilty of all this also, as I think most, most pastors or people who give sermons kind of preach to themselves also while we're up here to go out. But proclaiming the gospel Letting people know that Jesus is the one who saves. I work at a restaurant, and I've been more willing, or just just sharing more. That hey, I'm a pat, I'm a reverend, I'm a whatever you want to call me. But I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. That's what I follow. And there's guys there that don't. And there was one guy there, he's older than me, but we were talking about people's attitudes during the day, and he's like, you're always kind of in a good mood. I'm like, well, I, I can't worry about stuff. I just can't. Like, I honestly can't. And I thought about that. I didn't think about it in the moment, but I, I thought on that. I was like, well, that's the joy of the Lord, Right? Joy of the Lord just puts me in a good mood. Things could be falling apart. You know, at work or whatever, things can be going bad. And my coworkers at the restaurant could just be, man, this is just going bad. Everything's going wrong. It's like, it's okay. What do you got to worry about? Things happen. You move on. But again, how can they do that? How can the lost move on? Because when you find somebody who's lost, who doesn't know Jesus, they're always looking at what's wrong in their lives. And we can tell them, Jesus. Um, <laughs> we got a saying around here. I don't see any up here at the moment, but there's one back there by Jeff. But everybody needs a little Jesus. And we had a bunch of little Jesus around here. And I actually took a couple, and at the restaurant, there's one in the front and one in the back. And sometimes I'm like, everybody just needs a little Jesus. But not always that, but you can say, you know, you can proclaim Jesus to them by telling your story. Because we've all come from something. I've come from something, you know. I didn't used to be one to get up here and speak. I didn't used to be one to really walk with God. I grew up in church. I got saved as a kid. My teenage years up to probably through my 20s, 30s, I believed in God. I would even pray and he would answer my prayers, but I wasn't really all in for him. But even through that, he was faithful. God was faithful through that. And just one day, he really got a hold of me. And I thank him every day for that. Amen. And I know sometimes we might think, okay, you want me to share my faith with others. But what if they don't accept it? What if they lash out at me? What if they 
you know, are offended by that. Well, Paul goes on, verse 16, but, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, the Lord who, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So, not everybody, some, some version will say the Israelites rejected the good news or rejected the gospel. And Jesus even said, as they hated me, so they will hate you. So, even, we can't always be worried about if we offend people. Jesus said, they're going to hate you for some of this. But if you share the truth, if you share Jesus, he works on their hearts. We plant the seed, he waters, he provides the growth in that. And it's not always easy to get past that hurdle. In a world where everything seems offensive to everybody. But again, if you're worried about being canceled on a social media site for sharing your faith or people not liking you for what you believe. You don't need to worry about that. Just share the truth. And let the Holy Spirit and Jesus do the work in the people that you share with. And then verse 17 goes on. It says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So our faith comes from the word of God that we heard. I didn't get saved from nobody telling me about Jesus. Like I said, I grew up going to church. So they, Sunday school, they taught you about Jesus. They taught you the word of God. You know, Noah, Abraham, those stories. And others might not have grown up to church. But how many would be here today if they, somebody didn't say, tell you about Jesus? Amen. I don't think anybody would be here today if somebody didn't tell us, take the step and say, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the one that can save you. He's the one that can bring joy into your life, peace to your mind, and give you rest even in the midst of a storm. And I talked about worrying about, you know, if people hate us or not. Going to Matthew 16, 25, it says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And... If we're worried about what people think or how they're going to react, we're kind of, in my, in my thinking, you know, and I do that, but that's kind of selfish because I'm not sharing what I have with somebody else. He gave us a treasure, riches to share. He gave us the greatest news in the world. Amen. It's selfish of me to keep it to myself and not tell others. And I think on, on our trip to Massachusetts, kind of going up there, I think Chad had, to, had a thing. He kind of had opposition against him. But we got up there, and kind of every part of my body just screamed, turn around and go home. You're not supposed to be here. You have a wife and kids at home. You have responsibilities. Turn around and go home. Well, I didn't listen to that. Whether I wanted to leave or not, I said, God has a plan, and I'm just going to stay and walk in it. So I gave up myself for what God had in store. And I found that it happened on a trip, but it didn't have to stay on the trip. 
I can bring that back with me. Because even here, I can do that. I can give of myself. And as I give of myself, I find more life, more joy. He said we, well, he wants to give us life abundantly. We can have that. But we do have to give up of ourselves to find that. In there. And I mentioned this, and I think God gave me this message today. Because I think he wants the church as a whole to stop being silent. I think we have, we've had too many years of the church being silent and not sharing with other people. We can't have our own clique. We have to share. As the pastor would say, Jesus, and he says this in different ways. He's mentioned this in different ways, but Jesus didn't tell us to hang on until heaven or until he comes again. He said, go out, give of your life, share with others, making disciples, baptizing them, teaching them, growing them up. And as we grow them up, we also send them out so they can share with the world. And Thursday nights have been, been great lately. I don't know how many have been able to attend, um, but we've had a few people on our Thursday night blast. I know Jean's had a lot of fun. Um, I say she likes to do it because I let her do kind of what she wants. And I didn't get wet. <laughs> yet, yet. Well, that might be coming. But uh, this last one we did was on water walking faith. They had the faith to step out of the boat, walk on water, you know, having our face turned towards Jesus and focusing on him in that. But through our Thursday night classes, we kind of had a saying in that. Gene, Gene found it. You found it somewhere, right? I think Gene found it somewhere. But it goes a little like this. It's, it starts out, if not now, when? If you don't start now, when are you going to start? Tomorrow's not promised. An hour now, an hour from now is not promised. As far as I'm concerned, the next minute isn't promised to me. So if you don't start now, when are you going to start? When are you going to stop being afraid and start sharing with others? Start openly sharing your faith. And I know, I keep saying this, I know it's scary because I get scared. I get afraid. But if you focus on Jesus and what God wants, he can, he's never taken it away from me, for me, but he pushes me through it. And then the second phrase is, starts out again, if not now, when? If not here, where? In this church, we have a great opportunity, as some might say, practice. It's a good place to practice. Uh, I've been, had the great opportunity to practice preaching, giving sermons, to teach, to do a number of things, just figure out, in some sense, to figure out what God wants me to do. Sometimes you got to try things to find out what you're not good at, right? I led youth for a little bit. I found out that's not me. Um, Kids, that's not me. But we have a place here that we can practice, that we can learn and grow and kind of get an understanding of what God wants us to do. And 
the leaders here and everything are great. We'll help you out. We'll teach you. We'll grow you so you can run. So, you can be, so God can set you on fire and you can go out there and run and share Jesus with where he calls you to, with what he calls you to do. So if not now, when, if not here, where, then the last, if not you, who? If you don't share with somebody, who's going to do it? Sometimes, I found sometimes if you're not willing to do it, God will use somebody else to do it. But then there's times if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. And that might might sound a little harsh, but it's the truth. If you don't do it, you can't expect that somebody else is going to. If you don't share Jesus with somebody to plant that seed, they might not ever hear the name Jesus. Amen. And I've fallen short in some of this, well, in all of this. I think we all have at one point or another fallen short on this. Whether it's, for me, whether it's online, online ministry, that's something that's coming up, uh, where God has a, gave me a heart for people that watch online, that might not have a church, but they watch services and different things online. That's been growing. Walking down the street, I mentioned at work, Wherever we are, sharing Jesus and loving them as he loved them. Because he gave up his life for them. He gave up his life for us. And they need to hear it. Because if they don't hear, they can't believe. And if they don't believe, how can they be saved? And I think this is is important now because... I just feel that the enemy has claimed territory, whether here or wherever it might be, even up in Massachusetts. The enemy has claimed territory, and God's saying no. It's taken the enemy years to claim the territory, but God's going to take it back in days and weeks. But we must go out and share. He wants to use us to take back that territory. Because when we're willing to give up and share, it changes the neighborhood, it changes the town, it changes the country. You say, America needs to come back to God. The world needs to come back to God. Amen. It's not just about America. It's not just about our little corner either. Amen. It's about the world coming back to God, because one day he will come. And are we going to be ready? Are we going to be able to say, I did the work, I ran the race that was set before me? Just let everything, sometimes we just got to let everything go and let God lead. So when we let God lead, you never know what you're going to see. You never know the miracles that are going to come. I think sometimes we focus too much on the miracles too. It says go and make disciples, baptizing them, and all that. And it says signs and wonders will follow. So if we're not preaching the truth, we're not preaching Jesus, we're not sharing Jesus, He doesn't say the signs and wonders will come. He says, after that, signs and wonders will follow. We might not see it, but then again, we just might. Crystal, you can go ahead and come up. Have a song at the end here. I had asked my wife to sing, and she said, sure, be willing to do that.
And so as this song's played, I want, uh, uh, Pastor, you might be able to help me out. Gene, I know you're willing to help me out. Um, if we could just have people come up, I just want, we want to pray for you. We kind of want to send you out into this world today. So as the song goes, come up here. Don't be afraid. Take a step of faith. It's not going to be frightening. I promise. Be good. And Chad, maybe you can help out too with that. But we want to pray for you because I believe things that we've prayed for are coming. And there is fire that God is sending that will be so great the enemy cannot withstand. So again, as the song plays, come up. We want to pray for you. We want to send you. We want God to give you a fire that the enemy cannot withstand. So when you walk out those doors today, nothing will stop you from sharing Jesus with everybody that you meet.